In this video, we're going to be doing the test for the ARP main studs on the SR20 block. It's a known issue that the ARP main studs, the two in the rear, hit the upper oil pan when you go to install it because they're too long. So that's what we're going to be testing today. The block we're actually using today has the 52F stamp on the front. It's a late model S13 blacktop. The word is the early model S13s is one of the problems, but that's why we're using a late model S13 blacktop to see if it has the problem as well. Okay, we're going to spray out the last bolt hole locations on the main journal here. I'm just using some uh, brake parts cleaner. Let it sit in there for a little while and we'll spread out some compressed air. Now we're going to measure the depth of the bolt hole location for the main journal, the last main journal. We've already got it cleaned out. 1.6585 is the depth of the hole. The ARP kit we're using is the 202-5402. It's the SR20 DT main stud kit for the rear wheel drive SR20. We're going to go ahead and measure them. and they are 5.0575 inch long. Okay, now we're gonna take some Molly Base ARP lubricant and put it on threads of our main stud. You don't need a lot. We've already cleaned the bolt hole location and sprayed it out. We're gonna head thread these in. There should be no binding at all. It should be totally clean. You go all the way to the bottom and bottom out. You feel it bottom out, back it off, and just slightly tighten it. It does not need to be torqued down. We'll do the next one. I'm only doing the back two. Okay, now we have our studs installed. We're going to go ahead and install our main bearing caps. We're going to install number one and number five. Just so we can hold the beam on their level. Tap it down with a rubber mallet. And there's a stamp on top. One through five. And then to figure out which way is the front, you have the tang on the bottom. Or you have the tang on the block as well. They go on the same side. The other side does not have a tang. Next we'll go ahead and lay the beam down. It has an arrow pointing forward to the front of the engine and also the back corner here, the exhaust side, has a dent in it. Okay, now I'm going to install my washers and my nuts. I'm not using any lube on them because I'm not going to torque them down. I'm just going to hand thread them down. So you will be able to get a little more to take off the stud if you need to when you go to torque it down. But you shouldn't have to need any more than this. Now we're going to measure the height of the stud Getting zero at our caliber. We got 
on the exhaust side, on the intake side. Now granted, these are not torqued down, so you can go a little further than that if you need to. But now we'll go ahead and install the oil pan, the upper oil pan on top. See how much we actually have to move now. Now we're going to take the oil pan, the upper oil pan, install it on. We're going to take a rubber mallet and lightly tap it down and knock the oil pan onto the dowels. We want to hit it in the center as much as possible to keep it as level as possible. Because if you knock it on one side, of course, it's going to pull the other side up because it is hitting the uh, main studs. As you can see here on the exhaust side, the pan is not down all the way. There's a crack. Okay, now I'm going to measure the crack in between the oil pan and the block on the exhaust side. Okay. 1205 right there. Go all the way to the end. 0 0.1250 inch of a gap. So that's how much we need to remove off of the stud itself. The exhaust side is worse than the intake side, but I would remove the exact same amount on both studs in the rear. If you do not have the time or tools to service your studs, check out jds-performance-parts.com. There you'll be able to purchase a set of service studs.